Oh, look at that. Luxury, full power, yes, man. G'day, Spurs fans. Paul Hotspur Hippie here, the only psychedelic soccer show on the internet. And uh, as you can see, what a, uh, what a rock and roll exciting life I have. My windscreen wipers are working. It's funny, you know, just the little things in life. It's like, ah, oh, it's like luxury. Like whenever I'm a, a little bit in a bit of a funk, I turn on my tap and drinking water comes out and I think life ain't so bad. And I'm just going for a little walk here while I uh, wait for my fish and chips. I'm having fish and chips tonight, I'm having loads of them. <laughs> Well, if, um, if any of you uh, internet nutters out there uh, missed uh, the stream I did with Paul Trevelyan last night, um, I suggest you have a tune in. It was fantastic. What a breath of fresh air. Inspirational, you know, to see a guy that age. I mean, age is irrelevant, isn't it? But that age, so um, full of youth, full of youth. Uh, I kind of makes me look forward to the next... Uh, 40 years on this planet if I survive that long but hopefully I'll survive at least this, at least this weekend one more weekend Allah, one more weekend <laughs> if it's your will because we're playing Newcastle United <laughs> Newcastle United the scene of uh, Tottenham's horrible performance last week last week last season where we uh, we lost uh, I, thought, I can't remember the score, I don't want to talk about it. Hang on, lens is a bit grubby. That'll look nice. 6-1. Um, can you remember those? Can you remember that game from last year? The absolute capitulation. Down 5-0 in about 20 minutes. Hugo going off at half-time with a... Oh, I've got, I've got Stitch, or whatever it was. Um, but... On the bright side, we uh, we drew the second half 1-1. One, one. <laughs> but uh, I'm tipping, I'm tipping a um, a, t a complete 100% turnaround. I think we're gonna we're gonna beat Newcastle 6-1. 6-1. The team this year that has definitely proven, as Ange has been saying so many times, that uh, you qualify for Champions League doesn't mean crap. Doesn't mean crap. Doesn't mean you're going to be better. I mean, it's happened to Newcastle, and uh, I can only point so many fingers at them because it happened to us last year, didn't it? it happened to us last year. So um, I saw a, I saw an interview with uh, Eddie Howe on Optus Sport, and the only bit I was really interested in sitting on a wall here. <sighs> The only bit I was really interested in was uh, he was saying that uh, Ange Postacoglu was doing a very good job at Tottenham, which is uh, which is nice of him to say. So and I was thinking, you know, it's very uh, it's very civil between Premier League managers at the moment. There's no uh, there's no beefs going on, no uh, no big rivalries. I mean, I suppose there's a bit of uh, Klopp, Klopp and Pep, but they seem to. You know, they seem to be a bit quiet. And uh, I'm kind of hoping in the run up to the North London derby that Arteta puts a, a foot wrong because I don't think Ange is the sort of person to uh, draw first blood in a, uh, in a little contretemps. But he certainly is more than capable of responding to one as he did last, uh, last season when uh, Rangers boss Michael Beale at the time, where is he now, um, said that Ange was very lucky. He was very lucky at, at Celtic uh, because they had so much money to spend, even though when you actually look at uh, the transfer market comings and goings at Celtic, they were pretty balanced over, over Ange's two-year tenure. They bought a load of players in, but they didn't have to get rid of a load as well. Um, and so that's all, that's all Michael Beale had to say. You're a lucky man, and Ange didn't let that one go easily. Didn't, didn't you know? Didn't uh, go full bore into Michael Beale, but he just used that comment, especially when Celtic were triumphant uh, in their quest for the for the treble uh, at the uh, Scottish Cup final, which I was watching because I was dearly hoping at that stage of the season that 
I was, I was thinking the only reason Tottenham haven't hired or announced the manager yet because uh, we're waiting for Ange Postacoglu and he's not going to quit on Celtic until their season's over. So uh, I, I was up at the Central Coast with some friends, but I was watching the game and I was listening to every bit of news I could find, hoping that I would hear Ange give an emotional farewell speech to Celtic. It didn't happen. It didn't happen that weekend. Uh, a friend of mine, I was in the same room, he was saying it was like, it was like you were listening to World War II bulletins all night on your, on your phone. I was like, yeah, because I wanted to know, I wanted to hear, I wanted to hear that first confirmation. But after Celtic won the, uh, the Scottish FA Cup final, um, Ange said, um, this is all down to, you know, it's down to the players, it's down to the staff, it's down to the, you, the fans, and it's down to me because I'm a lucky man. And that got the biggest, biggest cheer out of the Celtic fans because they knew precisely, precisely what he was on about. So uh, come on Arteta, come to the party, put a little bit of boot in. Eddie Howe has passed the buck this week, although he seems like a nice chap, not very petty. But I, I get the feeling from Arteta, or Salt, Salt Bay's puppy dog, that um, he's more than capable of uh, launching a little barb. And the thing with Arteta is, I reckon he might think he's being clever and it will be couched in terms of conundrums and enigmas, but it'll stick out like a pair of dog's balls. And Andrew just use it subtly against him, especially when we beat them in the North London derby and uh, put their, put their uh, Premier League uh, aspirations back a couple of steps before we then go on and beat Liverpool as well. And, and Manchester City, we're going to beat all of them. It's going to be nine points in three games. Um, but yes, this weekend, it's at a decent time. This is, this is like, ah, oh, all the clocks have changed. It's so nice having a 9 p.m. kickoff uh, or 9.30. I never know the exact time. So I'm going to be doing a watch along. You could bet your bottom dollar I'm going to be doing a watch along. I'm going to be all nice, nice and awake as well. In fact, I'm going to be so awake, I'm going to go on Irish Hotspur uh, and uh, join him in the build up. He probably starts 10 hours before the game. Every week's like an FA Cup final with, with Irish Hotspur. He starts his build ups hours and hours and hours before the game. So you can get all your Spursy juices flowing. So he usually starts about two or three hours before kickoff. If you haven't already, go and give him a little bit of love. I was having a good old chat with Dave the other night and he's a, he's a very cool guy and he's uh, incredibly positive about where we're going this season and what's happening. And speaking of Celtic, you can see what difference uh, Ange Postacoglu's made. Celtic are having a horrible season this year in comparison to last year when their goal difference was plus 80 <laughs> and they ran away with uh, all three cups. And uh, now they've got uh, Premier League proven manager Brendan Rodgers in there. And uh, the magic is gone. The magic is gone. The, I watched some of the old firm derby, Celtic 3, Rangers 3, and it was a mess. Celtic were an absolute, absolute mess. And so there you go. And Postacoglu strikes again in some ways. And all those people in England, especially in England, that say, oh, Scottish. Scottish League doesn't mean anything. Well, how come Brendan Rodgers, who placed, who got it, well, don't forget, he got it, he got Liverpool to to uh, second in the Premier League, old Slippy G, and uh, won an FA Cup with Leicester City. There you go, proven Premier League manager. Goes up to the easy league. Oh, it's so easy in Scotland. He might, he might, he might do it, but hey, it's nowhere near as indomitable as Ange Postacoglu was last year. And we've got that guy, we've got that guy. We'll see what, we, what tactics we play. I wonder what tactics we're gonna play. It's gonna be all out full front assault at St. James's Park. We ain't bottling. And I reckon any fan at the moment, any fan or pundit that claims to be a Tottenham Hotspur fan, Jamie O'Hara, that is calling on Ange to change tactics, go more defensive, do more game management. That's like the truck out of Terminator 3 that just drove past. I expect to hear, see a robot hanging off the arm. Um, yeah, anyone, any pundit like that that's saying Tottenham should adapt, we should move our back line 10 metres, all this sort of shit. You're just bottlers. You're bottlers. You can't take the heat. You can't take the heat. You reckon the club's all about top four. When it turns out, you're all about top four because what we're doing is we're preparing 
We're preparing ourselves for a great season next year and I can't wait. Well, I'm enjoying it now. I'm not going to wish my life away. We've got seven beautiful games before the end of the season. Then I've got the bonus one in, down in Melbourne and I'm going to enjoy every single moment of Tottenham Hotspur running out this, this year because I know it is the genesis. We're in the genesis of something magnificent and you don't get to, the gen you don't get to be magnificent by bottling it, by bottling it and going to the corner flag when things are going tough. You mark my words, we're gonna be a hell of a team next year. I think we're a hell of a team now. Anyway, I think my fish and chips might be ready now. So uh, I will bid you farewell, Spursy fans. Peace and love, and come on, you